Eiffel. London. This is Coon Cassis for I from London. We're at Muscle Limit here in Enfield. With me, I've got Coach Kev Campion, or as I like to renounce him as Campignon. Kev, don't move. Kev, don't move. Well, listen, thank you for bringing me down here and introducing me to your fighters. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what sort of techniques and I'm going to say drills. I know that's saying using football, but what sort of techniques and things have you done here with your boxers? Well, just to say, I mean, it really depends on what we're doing. It depends on what fight they're in and, and where they're at. Obviously, we're small hall stuff at the moment, so it's sort of four rounders. And obviously, the two guys you spoke to today, and obviously Scott as well, are just fighting four rounders at the moment. All young lads, apart from Scott, who's 25. So today we brought them in. We just obviously bring them up with a little bit of skipping, just a warm up, and a bit of shadow boxing. And then from there, so nothing groundbreaking really cool to us. We go onto the pads, uh, just a bit of basic um, bag work. And then from there, we do obviously a tennis ball, which you've seen as well, which works on their movement and that sort of stuff. Um, we keep everything as specific as possible. So, i.e. if they're fighting four rounds, I try to keep everything as four rounds. So they'll, sh they'll skip for four, their shadow box for four, they'll do the bag for four. So we try and keep it as specific as possible. Um, we might use the old batons that we use sometimes again for their movement. And that's really about it. Again, at this stage, at the level they're fighting at, it doesn't need to be anything groundbreaking. Because they've just come from the amateurs, it's just about settling them down, settling their feet down, making them turn into their shots a little bit more and the best way to do that is just to keep it as basic as possible really. Well, I just want to talk about some of the, some of your boxers, um, obviously in particular the ones we've spoke to today. Uh, I'll start with Luke Fowler. Uh, tell me about Luke Fowler. Yeah, I mean, I've known Luke for uh, quite a long time, since he's about 11 years old, actually. And, um, I mean, we were friends before we become boxing coach and that sort of stuff. He was uh, 11 year old and I was had a shop at the time and he was working for me in the shop. He was boxing and we sort of got friends through that and obviously I was boxing at the time and from there we, we sort of hit it off and then he come to train with me and then he come and said he wanted to go pro and he wanted me to coach him and that's really where we are. He made his debut last year in September, um, he done really well, won for a guy called Craig Dyer, so a nice little learning fight for him, won every round, so you know he's, he's 18 years old so he's doing very well, he's got a good, good right hand, still got some amateur traits but we're working on that so we're getting there. And uh, Scott Hartley, Scottish Scott Hartley. Um, also had one pro fight. Um, tell us a little bit about Scott. Yeah, I mean Scott obviously come down from Scotland. He's now now in London training with us. So I mean Scott's a highly decorated amateur, um, a really really strong lad. He did box a draw in his first one. He was a bit unlucky. He got put down in the first round, but he recovered really well. He experienced. He learnt more in that fight than perhaps Luke did in this fight because he got put down in the first round, he experienced the cut, and he still worked through it to, to box a draw. So he learnt a lot within that, in that fight. He came back at the end of the first round, he was still a bit all over the place. So for Scott, that was really good. It was a really good learning experience for him. And, and then going forward, obviously he's out again on the 4th of March, so he's just building on what, what he's built from there. Like I say, he's got a massive amateur pedigree, obviously box for Scotland and things like that. So again, the same with him as what he goes, just trying to settle him down a little bit more, not so much in and out like they do in the amateurs, a bit more holding his ground in that. So, He's doing well, he's making good progress. And uh, finally, Matt McCarthy, who's yet to make his pro debut. Um, obviously, I've seen, seen a bit of Matt's training today. William, what can you tell us about Matt? Yeah, Matt, again, um, he's just come over to us from the amateurs, he used to box a chapel St Mary. Uh, Matt the Mirror, we like to call him. So, yeah, again, he's only a young lad. I can see why you've named him Matt the Mirror. <laughs> Either that or Joey Essex, you see what he's like. But yeah, no, I mean, Matt's really good. Again, he came over to us from the amateurs. We settled him down nicely. Um, he doesn't make his pro debut to, to May the 20th because he's still got a little bit way to go. But he's only, again, he's only 18 years old, so it's still a, we've got a long way to go with him. Um, he's still got his amateur traits. But, you know, again, he, he's really strong lad. He's very fast hands. It's just, he tend, tends to drop his hands a little bit at the moment, being honest. But he knows that that's what he's doing and we're working on it. So, again, it's small, small little steps at a time, you know. You're one of the youngest coaches around, as you keep pointing out to me. Uh, you're only 20. You're one of the best looking. Yeah, you're only 29. What's the plan for you, Kev? I mean, are you just trying to. Obviously, you're trying to assemble a stable here. We're not trying to. You are assembling a stable here. Uh, and is that the plan? Just to you know, get fighters under your book. You know, you're doing your, your thing for boxing. You're doing your thing for these fighters, and just build up your name, build up their name. You know, at the same time, a, a win-win situation for everyone. 
Yeah, very much so. Look, Cook, I love this sport. You know, you know me from Twitter and everything else like that. I hound the boxing world. I live, breathe the boxing world. Everything for me is boxing. Um, I am one of the youngest coaches. That's more by chance rather than by plan. Um, I've got problems with my eyes, so that's what I couldn't box very much and obviously turned to coach and it was the next best thing. Um, yeah, just trying to build a stable. This is what I want to do full time. I don't do this full time now, Cook. I've got a full time job, as I said to you before. Um, yeah, I just want to help these lads. You know, I do everything I can for them. I work really hard. I'm not the best coach in the world, I'm not the most experienced, I'm young, I'm willing to learn, but no one works harder for the fighters than me, and I think they'll tell you that, and I think that's come across, hopefully they said some good things about me, but I work hard for them, but yeah, I just want to go on, I want people to recognise me, to know who I am in the boxing world, it's not about necessarily being famous or anything like that, but I just, just want to be in this sport and just be in what we do, I love professional boxing, I love everything about it. You know, we're very privileged to be in the sport we're in and be in with the people we're in. And I'm just loving every minute. Living the dream is, is used too much and it's not, and I really am. I, I love it. You see me in the gym, just love being with these people, just love doing what we do, so. I'm not going to ask what coaches you look up to, but what coaches do you admire or perhaps think, you know, would you compare yourself style-wise similar to? I mean, it's not nice I'd say compared style-wise. There's loads I look up to. I mean, one in particular is obviously Bobby Rimmer, who's been fantastic to me. He, he's really helped me. He was like my mentor. But we've got so many in this country, Cook. There's so many good ones. You know, I say from Bobby, you've got obviously Jimmy and Mark Tibbs, again, great great trainers. Obviously, Dean Power, work Dean Power works corners with me. Again, a fantastic thing. Adam Booth, again, the Dark Lord, you know, he's a fantastic guy. You know, it's just some, so many, so many great trainers. And obviously up north as well, you've got obviously Joe Gallagher, Anthony Fennell, there's just so many. So I wouldn't say I'm like any others. I look up to them all. I've got no ego. I, I listen to everyone. I try and take everything I can and try and take a little bit of everyone and put my own style to it as well, you know? I mean, I've been talking to you for some time now, Kev, and obviously I know that you're not fall into thinking that this sort of thing you're doing is easy because, like I said, there's not many coaches at the top level in this country. There's, you know, you've you probably named a lot of them. There is others, but you've, you've named a lot of them. And like I said, to get to that top level is going to be very difficult but you know that but you're willing to put the work in to, you know to, to, to reach it yeah I, look I mean fighters make coaches as well it's not just coaches make fighters fighters make coaches so sometimes you need a little bit of luck you need a fighter to have a good fight get a title shot get a British title you see it happen all the time where is you never really heard of a coach they get a British title in their stable British champion in their stable then all of a sudden people know about them it is difficult to get to top level whether we make it or not I don't really mind but I just want to do the best I can but yeah it is hard but I'm willing to put the it's not just to be a top level coach just to be involved in this sport I said you before I love the people you know we're very privileged to uh, it's like a brotherhood and you know that because you've been sort of accepted in it now as well once you get in that pro license and you step through that door the, the willingness of everyone to help you and even though there can be rivalry between camps at times and we, not necessarily at our level but you know the willingness for everyone to help is, is fantastic and that's just what I love about it that's why I love being involved and I stalk everyone on Twitter <laughs> Why do you plug your Twitter? Where can people follow you on Twitter? Come on. Uh, Coach Kev Campion's my Twitter name. I'm always on there. I hound everyone. So, <laughs> so yeah, Coach Kev Campion. That's what Twitter's for. So is, uh, there's nothing wrong with saying that. But, um, Kev, listen, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, let me interview your boxers, etc., etc. I know you're a busy man, so it's good to, good to come up here and, like I said, catch up with you guys. So uh, I'd like to follow the progress of all these boys, you know. But, um, you know... We go to as many shows as we can, and we try and cover as many things we can. You can't do everything, it's, you know, it's virtually impossible to cover everything, but this is the sort of thing I like doing. I like to come and meet boxers I've never met before. Obviously, I've heard of, uh, of Luke Fowler, but a couple of the other boys here that I didn't know about before, but I do know about now, do you know what I mean? So. I mean, that's the thing, but I mean, we're a small hall, so something like this is, is great exposure for us and, and for the, the lads as, as well. You know, boxing's about selling tickets and getting a following and, and that sort of stuff. So, you know, things like this is important to, to get them known and to help them sell tickets and things like that. So, yeah, no, thanks for coming down and we're glad to have you. You just didn't do the tennis ball, Coog, did you? Yeah, that weren't going to happen. I've had this conversation with all you and all your other boxers. Uh, the tennis ball thing weren't happening. And before you say it, the wine gum situation again. <laughs> Hold on, no, the wine gum. I'll, I'll mention it. Listen, I didn't give you none. I didn't want to give you, your wife, one. I didn't want to give Luke one. I didn't want to give Matt one. That's the end of the story. So what can we say? You could get some sponsorship from wine gums out of this. I reckon the amount of exposure you... Wine, wine gums will be trending on Twitter tonight, will it? <laughs> I Film London sponsored by Wine Gums. Oh, I'll take that. Don't worry about that. I'll take that. <laughs> no, thanks, man. Anyway, thanks for coming down. Right, Kev Campignon.
French ancestor. Uh, fact, yeah, listen, we'll catch up with you real soon. All right, thank you very much for taking the time. I'm Kev Campion, and you're watching I Film London. I Film London. London, London. I feel blunt, 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 blunt. I feel.